Hello everybody and welcome to Project Trade. This is the Technical Indicator Show and in this video we are talking through the Linear Weighted Moving Average. It's another indicator from the Moving Average family. There's plenty of them out there. You're never short a Moving Average if you need one. So that does mean that the Linear Weighted Moving Average is doing Moving Average type things. You're not going to find anything drastically new with the Linear Weighted Average as compared with other basic Moving Averages such as say the Simple Moving Average or the Smooth Moving Average. It is a trend indicator which is going to appear on your price chart and it's going to create a data point for each period and then connect each of those data points with a straight line. And all of those data points will contain the average price for the period. But if they are all pretty similar, how does the linear weighted moving average try to distinguish itself from those other moving averages? Well, the linear weighted average is a faster responding moving average than most. It will chase the current price at a quicker pace than those simple or smooth moving averages. If you are willing to put up with more false signals on the basis that you're getting into trades early, with the signals that do turn out to be true signals then the linear weighted moving average that could be what you're after it's one of those moving averages where the more recent the data the more relevant the data how does it do what it does though let's check out the formula and find out you can see we're looking at a division based formula and if we focus on the top half of that division we we'll need to look at the calculations inside the brackets so first we take the price of the latest period and multiply it by the assigned weight for that period the weighting for the first period would be equal to the amount of periods that we selected for the input. So if we had an input of 10 periods, then the weighting score would also be 10. So that's our figure for the first bracket calculation. If we then go to the next bracket, we can see that this is the second most recent period of price multiplied by the assigned weight for that period. The weighting for the second period would be one less than for the first period. So again, if we are using our 10 period input example, then the weight for the second period would be nine. For the third most recent period, the weighting would be eight. And then for the fourth, seven, six that continues all the way down to the last period which would have a weighting of one equally when you are calculating the input you could start with that last period first as the weighting for that period the furthest back will always be one those three dots on the right hand side of the top half of our division merely represent the formula continuing to that last period once all of those individual formulas are done we can add them together and then divide the total by the sum of the total weight and that's the figure for the period for the linear weighted moving average probably sounds a little complicated if you are hearing it explained for the first time. So let's go through a full example of that 10 period input. We are just starting off with the top half of our formula. So we have 10 periods input and we've marked out a price for each period and you can see it's gone up fantastically quick all the way from $5 in the first period to $12 by the 10th period. And to be clear, the 10th period is the most recent period, the one where current price is. That's just because these are the type of gains that we're accustomed to, of course. So we need to make it a realistic example. Then in our second center column in each of those brackets we are multiplying the price for each period by the weighting for each period so period 10 as the most recent period has the strongest weighting of 10 the first period being the furthest back has the lowest weighting score of 1 so over in our right hand column you can see all of the totals for those individual formulas we want to add together all of those individual figures one by one completing that addition does give us a total of 434 that's the figure for the the top half of our formula. For the bottom half, we add together each of the individual weightings for the amount of periods, so 10 plus 9 plus 8 plus 7, etc. That gets us to a total of 55. That means now we do have the figures for our formula for the latest period of linear weighted calculation, and that is 434 divided by 55 for a linear weighted value of 7.89. Still a ways off that current period price of $12, but it was a very sharp increase, and I've no doubt the linear weighted will be in hot pursuit. Here's about what you could expect to see from a linear weighted moving average, and our example here does have a 10 period input. Colored in deep sky blue, you can see it does state pretty close to the price but your platform should offer you near enough any period input number that your heart desires if you're in 100 periods 500 periods two periods well, that's your choice the platform probably won't be able to go up to numbers like 10,000, but maybe another setting you're likely to see for the linear weighted moving average is which part of price you'd like the indicator to apply itself to we do tend to stick with something that includes the closing price so as to get a bit more consistency but if you have got a strategy for applying the price to the high or the low where you exploit those further reaches of price then more power to you you should also get the option as to whether or not you want to shift the indicator 
So this simply shifts forward the moving average by however many periods that you input it to shift forward by. On our example chart, the orange red colored average has an input shift of zero. So it is shown as only extending to the current period. Whereas the royal blue average, that is the exact same moving average in terms of inputs. Only this one is shifted forward by 15 periods. So it's 15 periods to the right of the current price. Absolute magic, eh? More than a few settings for you to have a play around with. In the moving average family, the linear weighted moving average is not the only average that tries to be a faster responder. Another commonly used moving average which has a most recent, most relevant approach to its formula is the exponential moving average. Because even though they both try and prioritize a quick response to price change, they do go about it in slightly different ways. The linear weighted average bumps up its weighting step by step for each period, whereas the exponential average really starts to ramp up more towards the most recent period. And I'd like to be clear that both of them are fast responders compared to the likes of the simple moving average or the smooth moving average. But the question on my mind now, probably on your mind as well, probably on everybody's mind around the world, is whether one of these averages is quicker than the other. Here we see both moving averages plotted onto a nice trending market with 50 periods input for each of them. In the bottom left hand corner we can see that the averages are basically on top of one another. And even when the trend begins to take off there's still a bit of time before the averages actually separate. However as the trend really gets going and continues to push on it does become clear that the linear weighted average in the yellow green color that is a faster price chaser than the exponential average in medium orchid. Likewise in this downtrend example, although we do see that in some spots the averages get close to one another, the linear weight average, it does stick closer to price than the exponential average does. So we can say for certain that once a trend gets going, the linear weight average, that is a quicker responder, no doubt about it. But does the fact that it's a quicker responding average actually make it a better responding average? The answer is not necessarily, because we also saw that the linear average doesn't actually break out much quicker at all than the exponential average does. So if your strategy is based off of the breakout, there's really not a lot of difference in it at all. We see the split on those deepening trends, and if you were chasing those trends, you'd likely already be a part of the move at that point. Also, as we said, even if the linear weighted average does get you into trends quicker, that might also mean that it is just getting you into more false breakouts quicker. Don't want to be caught out again and again because you are too quick off the mark. Now let's jump on to how we could expect the linear weighted moving average to help us with our entry signals. Now these aren't any different to your typical moving average signals, starting with whether or not the moving average is sloping up or down. Pretty simple stuff, if the moving average is sloping up then the market can be considered to be in an uptrend and you should therefore enter a buy trade. Or if the moving average is sloping down then that must mean that price has been selling off and you'd therefore be wise to get into a sell trade. Or instead of taking the signal by the slope, the signal can be from price crossing above or below the moving average. For example, on the left we can see where price closes above the moving average, so in that situation we would enter a buy trade. Then over on the right, price is closing beneath the linear average, which is indicating to us to enter a sell trade. Say the price doesn't close across the moving average though, but instead bounces off of it, that could be a signal for you to enter a trade in the direction of the bounce. In this strong moving up trend of price, we see a couple opportunities where price consolidates and begins to retrace, only to bounce off of the moving average and continue its move. Once we get a close of the candle where that candle is not touching the moving average at all, those could be our signals to enter into a buy trades. There's also the classic moving average crossover signal. You put two moving averages onto the chart which have different inputs, then when they cross over one another that's when you enter into your trade. On the left of our chart we can see the aqua faster moving average that crosses over the slower brown colored average. So the faster going above the slower, that's a signal for us to buy. We also see the opposite of that over on the far right. The quicker average moves below the slower and so that is an indication for us to enter a sell trade. Remember, none of these signals need to be your direct entry signals though. You can instead use those criteria as part of a wider strategy. So the moving average would act as a filter on your other, better direct entry indicators. You could say, for example, that you'll only take buy signals from your other indicators when price is above the moving average. You'll only take sell signals from your other entry indicators when your fast moving average is beneath the slower. There is plenty of options for how the linear average can help in the broader picture of the strategy rather than going all in on it as your entry indicator. 
and more of those options are found in the money management aspect of trading. To start us off here, let's go to the oldest trick in the book, probably so old it's more likely to be carved into stone than originally in any book. We are going to flip some of those entry signals into exit signals. So if the linear weighted average turned against your trade's direction, that could tell you to exit out of your trade. Say, for example, you're in a buy trade and the average starts sloping down, you could get rid of that position. Or say you're in a sell trade and price closed above the moving average, Average, that would be suggesting buying momentum to you and so therefore you would exit out of that sell trade. Finally you could use that moving average crossover. I'm sure you can see where we're going with this. For example, if we're in a buy trade and the faster average dips below the slower average, be done with the trade, close it off. You could also use the moving average as a trailing stop loss. You enter a buy trade with price above the moving average. So you place the stop loss where the moving average is and every period it moves to your favor, you bump up the stop loss with it, trail it on. Obviously don't ever trail it back, do stick with just trailing it forward. I once kept trailing a stop loss backwards for months before realizing what I was doing. There we go, money managed. Once you're in the markets with the linear weighted moving average, you can throw it up on the charts of any asset. It's not got some special market that it works fantastically well in and another where it's a dire indicator doomed to fail at every turn. It's typically a trend-based indicator, so it is going to work best in any market where the price is trending. Irregardless of what market you're in though, do make sure to know if there are any important times to be aware of when you're trading. A moving average and particularly a fast response moving average like the linear weighted can easily be thrown off by a particularly volatile time. For example, if you're trading the one minute time frame on the first Friday of the month at 8.29 a.m. US Eastern time and you don't know what's coming next, then you could be hopping in and out of trades as price swings back and forth, the bulls and the bears battling for dominance over the market, and you're somehow attempting to play both sides. The linear weighted moving average doesn't stand much of a chance in those circumstances, so do try as best you can to know your market environment. No matter how well you think you know the markets though, sooner or later if you're using a trend-based indicator like the linear weighted moving average, you are going to run headfirst into the range. Picture yourself taking a buy signal every time price crosses above the moving average and a sell signal every time it crosses below, not even waiting for the close every time it just crosses either way. Oh geez Rick, that sure is a lot of trades. That 30 period input with the color tan in this price range, it is going to crush you. There's a couple modest trend moves in there that you might make some money back from, but on the whole, I think we can assume what's going down and it is the account balance. In terms of similar indicators, as we've been mentioning throughout, you've got many other moving averages available to you. They come in all shapes and sizes. A few examples, if you're unsure, you've got the likes of the volume weighted average price, that's the VWAP. You've got the variable index dynamic average, the smooth moving average, the simple, there's so many out there that if you do enjoy moving averages on your chart, you will absolutely be able to find one that works best for your trading style and strategy. Also, if the typical moving average styles don't quite hit your mark, why not try the Ichimoku style averages? Two of the five parts from the Ichimoku Kinko Hyo indicator use a formula which takes the high and low of price from the look back input, then divides that figure by two, plotting the result on your your price chart and linking it with the previous plot point. Those two lines are known as the Tenkan Sen and Kijun Sen lines. The Tenkan Sen has a default input look back of 9 periods and the Kijun's look back is slower at 26 periods. The amount of periods input can of course be changed at your will to anything you like. From how they look I hope you can tell how they can act as a substitute for moving averages and how they can have the same entry and exit options as any moving average does. It's just another choice of the many many that are available to us. In conclusion, the linear weighted moving average, it is still a moving average, still doing moving average things. It doesn't especially set itself apart from the rest of the moving averages in that regard, but it does have that most recent, most relevant approach to data. That's mostly what you're staring down at if you are looking for a unique selling point. And we saw that against the similarly fast moving exponential moving average, that the linear weighted average actually did come out quicker than the EMA once the trend really started to get some wind behind it. Whether or not that fast, response is actually something you want only you know the answer to that unasked question if it is for you then you are likely going to have to put up with an increase on false signals if you are taking direct entry signals from the indicator whichever moving average you choose to use though same with the linear you've got entry signals 
exit signals, a lot of different trading aspects rolled into one. That goes as far as using nothing other than moving averages for the indicators making up your strategy. Might not get you to profitability unless you've got mad experience anyway, but who knows? I don't know you. You could be the ruling monarch of moving averages for all I know. That's all for the linear weighted moving average, but if you do want more information, you'll be able to find some of that no problem. Just take a look in the video description. And never ever forget that every single chart we show you has been completely pre-selected. They are not in fact arbitrary price charts where examples are plentiful. We search deep into those charts to find the moves that show us clearly making a maximum profits. Based on our examples, the indicator probably looks like a winning lottery ticket. Not the case, but we have traded the linear weighted moving average in live forward testing and those videos will also be linked in the video description. Thank you for watching. This is Project Trade. I am the master of the grey arts and there will be more.